What's up, family? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. I am really disturbed by this story right here. And uh, they always say you can determine how a nation feels uh, about itself and what, what you can judge it on by how it treats its children and how it treats its elderly. And uh, we're, very, we're, fought, we're failing in both areas rapidly. So disgusting and so, oof. So let's deal with this magazine type of show this morning. And this first story, before I turn the page, is the police release some gruesome details over the brutal, the brutal death of an eight-year-old girl who was laid lying dead in the bathtub for over a month before authorities found her body. What the hell? Jesus. Okay, the police released gruesome details over the brutal and senseless murder of Sophia Mason after the man suspected of the crime, 34-year-old Dante Jackson, was arrested after six months on the run. What is wrong with y'all? What is what kind of men is y'all bringing in your damn house? What kind of men are y'all? What kind of monsters? The gruesome discovery and you stupid, y'all. Listen. Ah. Oh. oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. The gruesome discovery of Sophia Mason's lifeless body happened on March 11th in Jackson's home in Merced, California, more than a month after she was initially listed as missing. But relatives told the cops that they had not been in contact with the girl since December. Mason's mother and Jackson's girlfriend, Samantha Frickin' Jackson, Johnson, I'm sorry, was already in police custody on a prior child abuse charge from 2021 at the time of the discovery and was subsequently charged with her murder along with Jackson. Y'all know, y'all, we didn't, y'all, we didn't go too far. These people, these, these, these Negroes are going way too far. Jackson was nabbed in Newark, California on Saturday after six months on the run. Help, helped. Listen, this is what I want you to hear. Please, listen. Helped by several women to evade authorities. Okay, you know what? Let me tell y'all something. I don't want to hear nothing unless we're willing to take responsibility for our craziness. And unless we're willing to take responsibility for the crazy shit we're doing and we're killing our babies and we're killing our elderly, I really don't want to hear about nothing else about what nobody else is doing to us because that's why they're doing it. And if you had any kind of wisdom, you would know. Everybody know that the it's, it's, it's even like when you go to school. When you were a kid. The kid that everybody pick on. Right? One If, if a group of kids pick on him, if one kid pick on him, he the pick on kid, everybody pick on him. Okay? Until he gets some balls and stand up and stop bending his freaking back. Okay, this is how this works. So you want to know why we the number one enemy of the sick? I'm not talking about all these systems in place to keep us sick. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these women who are so damn digmatized that they will sit there and bring a piece of shit into their house. Y'all going to have to excuse me now because I'm mad. And allow them to sleep with their daughters. Half of them know. 
Half of them, though, they go out and go grocery shopping and leave a girl in the house. See, let me tell you something about these bitches out here. Let me tell you what they do. Okay? I've had to deal with so many children and their mothers being horrible mothers. And that's why they pick up. See, because the laws of attraction. That's why you got to constantly check your spirit. You have drove in because of your frailties, your insecurities, your being set up for abuse, and you don't have enough information how to just leave this stuff alone for a minute until you figure out what's going with you. You will bring a man into your house and allow him to rape, murder, castrate, do whatever the hell he want to to your children to your children to your children because at a press conference on Sunday police said that three women helped Jackson keep out of sight of officials as he moved between hideouts uh, from Merced to the Bay Area then to Southern California, only to return to the Bay Area. I'm glad those uh, things, because they're not women, they're not women, have since been charged with accessory to murder after the fact for providing money, shelter, and transportation to Jackson. What else you want me to call these things? Huh? Look what you've done. To this poor child. She's laying dead in a bathtub. And y'all on the damn run. Okay. Let me calm down. Y'all need help. And that, see, this, this is what I'm saying. Some of these women have never been held. Had a lot of Young girls that are having babies now never even lived with their mother. Never had the village to even teach them anything. They don't understand that the most precious thing, the only thing that can keep us alive is our babies, is our offspring. And you can't have nobody interfering with the development and the growth of your babies. So here's what happens. Somebody probably turned you out and you were calling for sex and you were and, and you used to having sex before your time. So you now you gotta fulfill this need, and most of the times you're running into men who are just gonna make you out of prey. That you're praying for these weak ass things. Oh, God. Oh. The girl was subjected to sexual abuse, like I said. He revealed how the little girl had been deceased at the residence for over a month and that she was forced to live in the shed in the backyard as well as the closet inside the home. She was malnourished. <sighs> this dude said, in my 20 years of law enforcement, this case is the most disturbing and horrific I've ever in my life seen. To know what that poor little angel went through by the hands of pure evil just breaks my heart. Most of us standing here are mothers and fathers and we cherish our children. We'll never understand how this could happen to a beautiful child who just wanted to be loved. Our thoughts and our prayers go out to precious Sophia and her family as they continue to mourn, even though there is nothing we can do to bring her back. I hope that the arrest of Jackson will inch Sophia's family closer to the closure and ultimately the justice for Sophia. Oh, 
I don't understand how y'all could do this kind of stuff. But I will say this. If you got somebody in your house that is mistreating you and because you've gotten yourself in a situation where you you've been like I said you've been driven mad basically and your soul is gone because more than likely like I said you've had things happen to you way before you should have had them happen and either you the kind of person that recognized that and try to get help for yourself and see how that altered your personality or you a person that keeps on falling deeper and, and sinking deeper and deeper and deeper and lower into abyss. These women that helped this man after he killed this, this little girl and raping her. Well, all I can say is that is one of the most horrific stories I've heard. I I can't even. Um, she was in the little, she was in the uh, bathtub for a month. So, like I said, I'm gonna turn the page on this because it's so damn crazy. And y'all, but we better check ourselves. Better check you. You got somebody in your family that's got stinking thinking, they ain't thinking straight like this, and you watching them abuse their children or allowing their new boyfriend to do it or new girlfriend to do it. Okay. I'm going to turn the page on this because this is so disgusting. Oh, this is so disgusting and it's so pitiful. Um, uh, but I want to know how many of y'all, before I shut this video down, how many of y'all have seen the, the um, King Charles hand? And you got people out here trying to figure out what the hell is wrong with his hands. They look like beach balls. His hands are swollen. Oh. <coughs> they look like uh, beach balls. They're red. And they're huge. And uh, we're trying to figure out. Oh, we're trying to figure out what is wrong with his hands because of he can't rule like that. His hands look, ooh, they look messed up. They look really, really messed up, and I I, I forget what his doctors say about his hands. Because I'm so, I'm really, really uh, on edge about this little girl that they decided to do like that. Um, but you know what? They gonna get theirs. They gonna get theirs. That's what I'm. I'm gonna leave it at that because it's it's just making me so angry to keep thinking about that. What they would do to that baby like that? Oh my god. Mm -hmm. What about y'all? How did y'all enjoy y'all uh, day? Y'all enjoyed y'all Sunday? Um, and um, did you do anything special? Or you sat around and watched football all day? Ain't nothing wrong with it if that's what you did. If that's what you did. My next story, you guys, is about the suspect who allegedly beheaded his ex-girlfriend on the street. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear me? Because, see, I, I want y'all to know why I call this the mental house. 
we got people running around in these in these communities that need to be in an insane asylum. You need to let some of those men out of the uh, jail that haven't done anything, probably had a bag of weed, and replace them with people that I'm sure you know have a history of mental illness. See, because Reagan cut all that stuff out. Took all the money out of that. Y'all, li listen. This is a suspect who allegedly beheaded his ex-girlfriend on the street in California. Now, they arrested him. Uh, Jose Rafael Solano Landita was arrested on homicide charges after he allegedly killed his ex-girlfriend, Karina Castro, 27, outside her apartment. This Thursday, during a domestic dispute in the Bay Area city of San Carlos. According to the San Mateo County Sheriff, witnesses flagged down the police during the attack, but when the officers arrived, she was already dead. Local media outlets reported that the weapon was a sword. Oh, oh no. Your children have gone mad. Your children have gone mad. Woohoo! Castro is the mother of two children, one of whom is Ladina's one year old daughter. So she had baby a baby by this madman. After the attack, Landita fled on foot two blocks away, but later returned to the crime scene unarmed, the sheriff said. He probably was crying. So they took him into custody and booked him into the jail where he remains without bail. I miss her already. Martin Castro, Katrina's father, told Crom, my heart is empty without her. She was my best friend. On Friday, he mourned at the scene of the murder. And several of Karina's Castro's friends also wrote tributes to her on Facebook. And y'all cannot tell me that she was in a domestic situation and nobody knew about this. And he ultimately that culminated with him chopping off her goddamn head. She was talking about her baby daddy. Said she said she had put a tar he had put a target on her. You ain't tell the police? Yes, I'm passionate about this. I also lost a family member to domestic violence. Yes. He killed her. Ah. Uh, uh. The only way this can happen is if you don't know anything that's going on. Because otherwise, you have a duty, especially if there's children involved. Because the grown people, you can't change them. They're going to do crazy stuff. But the kids are basically in a hostage situation, y'all. The kids, they can't help what their parents doing. They cannot. Oh. Oh. They just in it. They are just in it. Her family is broken hearted by the gruesome murder. And she has a GoFundMe page set up people. She leaves behind two beautiful daughters, ages one and seven. The Community Foundation of San Carlos and the city of San Carlos also set up a contribution fund uh, for Kareem Castro's children, according to the website. The donations will go 100% of them to her children. All God requires of us to do is to love each other.
Love is stronger than hate. Y'all may not think it, but it is. It's, it's powerful. And when you love yourself, and when you love, it will allow you to love humanity. It will allow you to look. You when you get mad at you, you gotta draw a line within yourself. You gotta have that mechanism to say, okay, now I'm going too far now. Let me get the hell away from this person because I feel like I'm getting ready to kill him. Whatever. You have to find that off switch inside yourself. Because if you don't, you're going to be in a world of hurt. I mean, you, 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 uh, uh, he beheaded her in front of onlookers. Okay. All right, y'all. I'm gonna get off to here because I've been on long enough, and I'm. It's it. it you know, I'm just. I'm just done with all this. So I need you to um, like the video and share the video. And uh, I'm gonna ask y'all to do me a favor. I'm gonna ask uh, you the guys to uh, send inbox me. Uh, your email addresses so I can at least uh, stay in touch with y'all in case YouTube decide to do something crazy like they do a lot. I want to be able to take advantage and I have also we have a newsletter that's getting ready to start coming out and I would like to have the email addresses of, of uh, the subscribers that I may um, supply this information free of charge but it's important that you get it and it, a lot of it is going to be very beneficial to you. So, uh, if you can, inbox me your email addresses. I would really appreciate that. And um, enjoy the video. If you like what you hear, please like, please subscribe, and please share. And I'll see y'all in the next one.